Hello and welcome to Spinetics tutorial on how to create a 360 degree by 180 degree spherical panorama uh, compatible with Spinatic so you can create virtual tours and customize them. Um, this is the fourth part of a four part series. Uh, in the fourth part we're going to process the images that we shot in the third part and we're going to stitch the images and we're going to edit the nadir or the footprint of the the spherical panorama um, and then we'll your image will be ready to go into Spinetic. So to begin I want to take the four images that we shot in the third part of the series and I'm going to bring all four of them at once into uh, Photoshop. Okay so the first thing that I'm going to do when I get into Photoshop is very important is I'm going to select all of them uh, and I'm going to synchronize okay and here's the synchronization option window in this window we just want to make sure that all of them are checked uh, you, you don't really need all of them but they're probably going to come to check by default anyways you don't have to worry about these guys down here and we click OK okay now remember in the third part of the series uh, I decided that this angle was the angle that best re represented the the light of the entire image. So, um, so this is the average of the four images. So I'm going to work on this image, and whatever works for this image, it's going to automatically synchronize into these images. So, with that said, let's get started on editing this image. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check the the histogram. Um, this is a representation of all of the pixels in the image. Um, I want to make sure that no uh, white pixels are blown out. So uh, what that means is when a uh, pixel gets blown out, it, it basically the light is being recorded off the charts, um, which is not good because there means that there's no information there. So these red marks are are signifying that so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring those back in and how I can do that on Photoshop uh, raw is I can just take highlights and see how this red is coming back in I can just do that until these pixels come back into uh, in, in, into the range that we're, we're dealing with here so it's not perfect you'll see that there's some uh, but that's okay this it has most of them so now again with the blacks uh, there's no red or other kind of color that's signifying the blacks but we know that there's a bunch of them that are getting cut off right here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the the blacks and I'm gonna bring them back a little bit okay so that's good that most of them I brought most of those back there's still some that are clipping but but that's okay that's that's pretty good um, the exposure is pretty good uh, it's it's fairly dark in this area uh, I might want to bump it up just a, a smidge a smidge and um, we'll go from there so I don't know if you noticed but after I edited anything in here um, the remainder of the images were all also changing as well so um, color I like to do later on in the process uh, color correcting but uh, right now what we definitely want to do is we want to do uh, the lens corrections so if you click on this little icon here it says lens corrections uh, it may be different in different versions of Photoshop uh, but what you want to do is you want to remove chromatic aberrations okay and then purple amount you can slide this to how much to wherever you want but a good number is usually seven that I found okay so now what this is doing is this is taking out uh, let me see here let me show you a good example let's bring this back find it good okay here's a chromatic aberration right here see this purple line and this green line uh, these color aberrations 
are a result of the really wide angle lens, okay? Uh, without going into too much technical detail, most of which actually I, I can't remember or I didn't know in the first place. But these, are, are in a, it especially happens around edges. Uh, you want to get rid of these. It, it, it may seem subtle but at first, but it really, uh, it really helps out the image. Okay, so you're going to remove promotic aberration. See how that removed that? And then to follow it up, I usually put a 7 there. It, for the most part, it really, really helps out. So there you go. We have that. And now we're ready to save the images. Okay, so I like to save these as uh, TIFFs so we don't lose any compression. Uh, let's say that this is a uh, test pano, okay? Uh, we want to save in the same location. We are done. We can close out of there for right now. And then we're going to open up PT GUI. Okay, so now we're ready to start stitching the, the pano images. Uh, so I'm going to open up PT GUI. Now PT GUI is a paid uh, software um, if you're going to get the Pro, which we recommend. Uh, it's well worth it. I know that there's Huggin and that's free uh, and I've heard that there's nothing wrong with it. It's good service. We've always just used PT GUI. So, so anyways, here we go. Uh, load images. Okay, so here they are. Here's my four TIFF images that I'm going to stitch and open. Okay, so we can see already from opening these up, these are in order. You want to make sure that they're in order. So if you were kind of spinning around, in this case uh, clockwise, you'll see that there's that wall, which is going to overlap with this wall. Um, it's a little, it's a little small here to see, but anyways, it, the the images are in the correct sequence. Okay, so. Always make sure that you have the automatic uh, camera lens parameters on. Um, and what we're going to do next is we're going to align the images and just wait for this. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is, you can kind of get an idea of wh where we're going with this as far as how the stitching is doing. The stitching looks great. Uh, you can see that because we shot this at a zero degree uh, angle with the nodal ninja that we're going to have to do a little bit of patching up here, um, that's okay. It's not a big deal. It's pretty easy. And you're also going to see that we have a little bit of Photoshop work to do down here. That's the nadir that we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So uh, anyways, uh, I what I usually do, it, sometimes it's not necessary, but I just hit the straighten panorama button. Okay, you, know, you see it shift around a little bit. And then I also go to uh, advanced up here. Okay, and then I find the optimizer. Make sure it's set to heavy plus lens shift. And optimize using PT GUI. Okay, and then I run optimizer. So this is saying the results are great. Uh, it's saying this is very good. Um, now we're, we're, we're not, I was going to say we're going to, we're getting lucky with this. Um, uh, it's not always going to say this is very good. Um, it's because that we had the right settings for the Nodal Ninja panel head that this came out so well. Uh, that's the, the main contributing factor why this, this, the stitching went smoothly. So I'm going to accept the, the, the the changes with the optimizer now maybe we'll do another tutorial where we have to put custom control points and it's not that hard to do but uh, I think I'm going to keep going with this tutorial here and not not go off on a uh, tangent so that looks pretty good what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the create panorama tab all right so when we um, output this image file uh, the file format that you want to have probably is a TIFF file, okay? 
And the pixels, I like to set the pixels at at least 10,000 wide. You'll see that if you link the width and height, that the, the height will automatically change or vice versa. Now this is very important, they, this, it, the, the panoramas for Spinatic must be 2 to 1 ratio. So the length must be twice as long as the, the height. So after you make sure that that's the case, uh, you can go, I, I, we save and send as batch stitcher. Alright, so you want to make sure that you name it whatever you want to name it, and then it's in the right folder. In this case it is. So we're clicking save. Now that's just going to take a minute. Um, the next thing that we're going to do, and I'll get ready, this is, we're pretty much done with PT GUI, or we are done with PT GUI, unless something goes horribly wrong here in the next couple of steps. Uh, I'm just going to kind of X minus this out, and we are going to take the panorama, which it's, here it is, it's saving, uh, it's writing to this file, and we're going to take this panorama and take this out of here and we're going to put it into KR Pano uh, tools to, um, to to edit the nadir so let's see how we're doing with okay so it's already processed it's saved okay I can close out PT GUI now uh, we're not going to need it so what I want to do with this image file and this is a that saved it to the, the file. These are the original images. Okay, so this file is almost ready for Spinatic. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring bring the file and into uh, Carapano tools. We're gonna break these down into tiles. We're gonna edit with Photoshop the, the, the nadir, the footprint, uh, and make sure that the zenith, which is the overhead shot, the overhead angle, it looks good and then we're gonna cut the file size down a little bit this is at uh, 187 megabytes we have to be under 75 megabytes to be compatible with Spinatic and for what we're doing this is certainly enough of a file to to have a good image so so here we go uh, we're gonna take the image and we're going to bring it over to whoop, Carapano tools and it's just a droplet so let's see, we want to go from sphere, it's in a sphere mode right now, to cube. Alright? And you'll get this window that comes up. And just let it do its thing. Hit the spacebar to continue. And now you're going to notice that, okay, these are our original TIFFs. This is the PT GUI file. This is the, panora the, the spherical panorama, and these are the files that Care Pano Tools just outputted to this folder. Okay. Uh, this stands for uh, B stands for must be for behind, D for down, uh, F for front, left, R for right, and U for up. Okay. We want to focus on the D for down and the U for up. All right, and we're going to bring these two files, and these are tiles, tile files, into Photoshop. Now we want to take this uh, this tripod out. Okay, so it looks like I didn't even think about it for this tutorial. I picked probably the most, the hardest <laughs> uh, footprint you could probably possibly do. Usually when you take the panoramas, you, you should probably look to see what's under you. Photoshopping this is going to be a little bit difficult, uh, but it's okay. We can do it. Um, so I'm just going to take the, the clone stamp, make sure it's a little bit bigger. Okay. And I'm going to try to replicate this these wooden flo uh, floorboards that come across the bottom of here. Okay. Oh, it's all right. And this, I could probably take my time and do much better with this, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just gonna show you kind of the process. 
All right, again, you can put one of those mirror balls. I think they're pretty cool. Or you can put your logo right here by bringing in another file. But anyways, uh, that Nadir is done. It's okay, it could be much better. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna save it. Don't do a save as, just save it. Save that right over the original file. And here's the upshot. Okay, we do have a little bit to do right there, but not a big deal. Okay, good enough. Save this one as well. Get rid of Photoshop for the moment. So those two images, those two files were just saved over with the changes that we made in Photoshop. Now we're going to click all of the the tiles again, including the ones that we just saved over. And we're going to take those, we're going to click and drag and bring them right back over to Care Panel. Instead, this time we're going to go from Cube to Sphere Droplet. Okay? And this will look familiar. Okay? So here we go. This is the file that it it gave us. And you can see that the before we even bring it into Photoshop, you can see that there's no white checkered marks on the top. We could we took out the the zenith. The nadir is down here. It's looking good. It's look okay. So this file is now ready to go into Spinatic. And there you have it. Um, again, there's diff there's a million ways to do everything that I just did. Uh, this is the workflow that I use personally. Um, You'll have to play around with it though, that's the fun part, and see what works better for you. Uh, but this file will definitely work with Spinatic, and if I had multiple uh, panoramas in this location, then we could make a virtual tour, or we could just use this one panel for, for a single uh, virtual a panel virtual tour. So there you have it, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the tutorial or if you found it helpful, please subscribe. We're going to get into some of the the details of some of this process, maybe show you different ways to edit the Nadir, um, maybe some more difficult stitching situations, uh, stuff like that. So give us a subscribe, go over to Spinatic and make a virtual tour. Okay, thanks guys.